Welcome, my name is Janine and in this video we will learn about the constellation known as Perseus. Perseus is represented as a Greek hero and it's an ancient constellation. The earliest records date back to the Babylonian star catalogs that come from ancient Mesopotamia era of human history. It's named after a Greek mythological hero and it's recorded as one of Ptolemy's 48 constellations in the 2nd century. Some depictions of Perseus show him holding the head of Medusa. Medusa was a mythological creature who she had snakes for hair and if she looked at you she turned to stone. And this star right here is meant to represent the head of Medusa. This star is called the Demon Star or its proper name is Algol and it's the second brightest star in this entire constellation. And what's interesting about the Demon Star is that its brightness changes over a period of time. And that that's because it's an eclipsing binary. This is a triple star system and when one of the stars travels behind the other, it starts to dim and then it can change brightness over time. It gets dimmer and then brighter, dimmer, brighter, and this can be recorded over time. And that's one of those special little things about Perseus. You can also learn to identify it through the star clusters, like one right here and here as well. So when can you see it and what does it look like? This is what the shape of Perseus looks like. This is meant to represent his head. I kind of like to think of this as his hat. We have an arm, another arm here. These are his legs, and then this is his torso. If you notice, the hat portion kind of points towards this double star cluster, and that's one of those features of this constellation. So when can you see Perseus? Perseus is best seen in the northern hemisphere during the autumn months and into the early winter months. You want to look for those star clusters that are nearby to Cassiopeia and Auriga. So Auriga would be on this side of the constellation and Cassiopeia would be over here. In between those two constellations, that's when you want to look for those different star clusters that are littered throughout this constellation. I've also used the Pleiades star cluster to find Perseus as well. The Pleiades is a really recognizable star cluster that's in the constellation of Taurus. There are many variations of this star pattern as well, and this is true for some other constellations as well. So as you look at different resources in books or online, just notice that the pattern of Perseus can vary. Let's review the pattern that Perseus makes across the sky. Here we have the official star map of Perseus released by the International Astronomical Union. And notice all the constellations that surround Perseus. We have Andromeda, there's Triangulum, Aries, down here is Taurus, and this feature right here is the Pleiades, and I often use the Pleiades to help me find Perseus. There's also Auriga, and it has that very bright star known as Capella. So if you can find Auriga, and you know where Andromeda is, Perseus is in between the two. There's also Cassiopeia right here, which you can use as a pointer towards Perseus. Also, there are some interesting celestial objects to notice here. This right here is a double star cluster, so I often see this whenever I'm viewing Perseus. There's also some other objects here as well, and two brighter stars, which we will examine as well. Also notice the shape. Here's his head. He kind of has two arms that go out. This is his body, and then his legs as well. So let's get some practice with looking at some pictures. So as you look at this picture, what are the things that stand out to you? For me, I notice the star clusters, and a few of them as well. I notice this right here. This area right here looks like a star cluster, and then this down here. So let's work backwards. First, this is the Pleiades. This is one of the star clusters in Perseus, and this is the other double cluster I spoke of before. So if we were to point out the pattern, here we have the head with his little hat. He has an arm that comes off here. Here's his other arm and then here are his legs, and then this is his torso. So remember, depending upon the resource that you're looking at, there's a wide variety of patterns I've seen for this constellation. So I often just refer to the official star pattern by the International Astronomical Union. But the way I kind of point out this shape is looking for this area right here. I kind of know this is like the center of his kind of chest area as well. And then I also view this star cluster is here. This down here is the Pleiades. 
let's keep getting some more practice. So this is a similar picture. We're seeing some similar objects, maybe not everything, but close to it. Um, there's also the bright star Capella as well, which is part of the constellation Auriga. So which objects can you point out? Here is Capella, here's the Pleiades, and then here's one of those star clusters we mentioned. And then here is another one. This is the double cluster that's pretty easy to point out. And then these stars over here are Cassiopeia. And notice you can use this portion of Cassiopeia to kind of aim you right towards Perseus. So if we were to point out Perseus, this is what his pattern looks like in the sky. Kind of almost looks like a starfish to me in some ways. And the other constellations we have are marked here. We have Cassiopeia. Also Andromeda is located right here. Here's where the Andromeda galaxy is. This is the object, the most distant object you can see with the naked eye. And then here we have our pattern of Perseus, Capella, and the Pleiades. In our next picture, we can see how we can use Cassiopeia to help us find different objects in the sky, including Perseus. So Cassiopeia is located towards the center upper part of this photograph. It has a W shape to it. So here we can see this is where Cassiopeia is, right there. And Cassiopeia, this part of the W shape, points down towards Andromeda Galaxy. And then we have the Andromeda constellation here. But we can also use this portion. We can go from the center star, work our way outwards, and then we can find Perseus. Now most of Perseus is pictured here, but not all of him. Here's that double star cluster, and then here's another star cluster as well. So remember, we can use this portion to help us point out the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is the closest spiral galaxy to us at about 2 million light years away, and you can see it with the unaided eye. And if we were to point out all the other constellations here, this is what we have. So Cassiopeia points down to Andromeda, Andromeda is connected to Pegasus, and only a portion of Pegasus um, is what we're seeing here. And then Cassiopeia can point to Perseus. Also notice Triangulum, a very simple constellation pattern. And then Aries is down here as well. This time we're not able to see the Pleiades in this photograph, so you have to use other constellations to help you find your way towards Perseus. And it's really these, these star clusters right here that I use to help me find the rest of the constellation. Let's examine some of the legends behind Perseus. It is often the stories of the stars that we can connect to in some way which can help us remember the constellation. The earliest records we have of Perseus date back to the Babylonian star catalogs, and Perseus was known as the Old One. Here are some translations in Sumerian and Akkadian as to what Perseus represented. The Babylonian star catalogs were really important for the timing of agricultural activities. It was a catalog of 71 different stars and constellations, and many of the sky patterns that were listed in this catalog were the predecessors of the zodiac constellations and the modern day constellations constellations we see today. They also had pairs of constellations that rose and set together, a path of the moon and planets, and also a solar calendar. Perseus also makes an appearance in the Persian manuscript known as the Book of Fixed Stars, and it was written by Al Sufi, who was a Persian astronomer. He combined the astronomy knowledge that was recorded by Ptolemy in the second century, and then he also recorded indigenous Arabic knowledge of the sky along with it. In Greek mythology, there are a wide variety of legends about Perseus. Many of them are most likely derived from earlier Egyptian, African, and Arabic cultures. In this particular story, Perseus is connected to Andromeda and her family. Queen Cassiopeia, who is the wife of Cepheus, boasted of her beauty, and this angered the sea nymphs. So Poseidon sent Cetus, a sea monster, to destroy the kingdom. Their daughter, Andromeda, was offered as a sacrifice to the monster in order to save the kingdom. Perseus heard her cries as she was chained to the rock, and he came to save her from certain doom. In this painting called The Rescuing of Andromeda, we can see all the characters in this story. We have Perseus, Andromeda right here. We have Pegasus, Cassiopeia, Cepheus. We have Cetus, the sea monster, and also the head of Medusa, which 
Perseus is often known for slaying. And all these characters can be found in the sky, through the stars. There are a wide variety of other legends about Perseus being the son of Zeus and Danny. Then we also know of the different legends of Perseus slaying Medusa. And I won't go into the details of these legends because there are so many versions of them. But you can see that Medusa right here I wanted to point this out simply because there's a portion of Perseus in which one star is kind of represented as the demon's head. Remember, all mythologies of the stars vary according to time, place, and culture. There is no one true mythology for any constellation, just a variety of them. We've come to the end of our video about Perseus, the Greek hero, so let's review everything we've learned so far. It's best seen in the autumn and winter months, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. There are many ways to find Perseus. You can use Cassiopeia and Andromeda. You can also look for the star clusters, such as Pleiades, to help you find your way, or you can also simply look at the star clusters that are located within Perseus. There are many celestial objects, including the double cluster, the Alpha Persei cluster, there's different nebulae, galaxies, a wide range of objects that can be seen. Some of them you don't need magnification to see, like this particular star cluster right here, but others you definitely would need either binoculars or telescope to see. So I wish you luck finding Perseus. I think it's one of the trickier ones to find simply because its star pattern isn't always obvious and I've always struggled to find this particular constellation because of the wide variety of patterns that I've seen in different resources. But if you can look for the star clusters that are a part of Perseus, I think you'll be able to find it. Remember, practice makes perfect and it takes time and patience in order to learn the sky and identify the star patterns and celestial objects that are located in the boundaries of constellations. I wish you luck and keep looking up.